425 p.m. Eastern. We have the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Denver Broncos. Shout out to Birdie back in the Steelers. Certainly was a lot of love for the Falcons. And the Steelers were tried and true. Uh, they played a hell of a game. Six field goals. Boz, man, what a monster. And then he had the punt at the end of the game. And power field at mile high, Denver, Colorado. 85 Fahrenheit, partly cloudy, 7 miles per hour. Take a look at the line history here for this one and get into the cash flow. We have the total at a very, very low 36 and a half. This opened up at 37 and a half, has dropped 36 and a half, slightly juiced to the over. Let's get to the point spread in this one. We have we have the Broncos at Pinnacle right now at plus three at minus 120. They opened up plus three at minus 123. It's funny, uh, this line's moved a lot. Uh, you know, so this opens up with the Broncos at plus three at minus 123. This was a plus three at plus 110. You know, this was a, you know, a clear two and a half for a while. Now it's back at three and heavily juiced at three. Uh, very interesting. Let's get to the cash flow then for this one. We have 10% of the tickets and 93% of the cash on the Pittsburgh Steelers. We have 8% of the tickets and 46% of the cash on the under, a low under. A unique says this is too low of a total here. Sammy Cummer says, fields a field goal favorite on the road? Question mark. It's too bad we're not going to get to see Russell Wilson going up against these Broncos. But we're not. Uh, Steelers got their season off to a great start with an 18-10 victory at Atlanta. Sharpie says Bo Nix is not ready for the Steelers D. He looked bad versus Seattle, and this ain't Seattle D. This is a healthy Pittsburgh D. Fields expected to get another start for the black and yellow. 17-23 uh, for 156 yards. He also ran 14 times for 57 yards. George Pickens, six catches for 85 yards. No other receiver caught more than Fryer with 27 yards. Najee Harris ran 20 times for 70 yards. Steelers offense looked decent, but couldn't get into the end zone. Had to settle for those six Chris Boswell field goals. Three of those field goals were from 50-plus. And then he had to handle that crucial punt. Uh, Cameron Johnson was in injured, and Boswell had a pretty nice punt in the closing minutes there. Uh, Johnson's done for the year. So th the Steelers signed Johnson in the offseason uh, after releasing Presley Harvin. Uh, he had been their punter for three seasons. Nobody signed Harvin. So I imagine that Harvin, who's a free agent right now, will then sign with the Steelers. I don't know if that happened today. I imagine that's going to be the case unless there was a reason why they stayed away from him. I, I don't know the situation. Uh, they were 8 of 17 on third down, but just 0 of 2 in the red zone. Held the ball for 35 minutes and 36 seconds. But as Sharpie was saying, this healthy veteran defense looked excellent. Pass rush finished with just two sacks, but got seven quarterback hits on Cousins. Held the Falcons to 2 of 9 on third down and 1 of 2 in the red zone. Dante Jackson and Deshaun Elliott each had interceptions. Broncos coming off that 26-20 loss at Seattle. Bo Nix, 26-42 for 138 yards and two picks. Also ran five times for 35 yards. The offense only had 231 total yards. That 35 yards rushing that Nix had led the Broncos in rushing. Julian McLaughlin was next with 10 carries for 27 yards. He lost a fumble. It did not look good. Josh Reynolds caught five passes for 45 yards to lead the receivers. And Devon Veli, uh, Veli, Veli, God, I always screwed up. Devon Veli. Caught eight passes for 39 yards. They were held to 5 of 18 on third down, just 1 of 4 in the red zone. The defense was pretty strong. They held the Seahawks to just one failed red zone opportunity and just 158 yards through the air. They also scored two safeties. Jonathan Cooper was excellent on the pass rush. Two sacks. Those were the only sacks the Broncos had, and four of their seven quarterback hits. Alex Singleton had an interception. They lose Garrett Bowles, their left tackle, to an ankle injury. Uh, the X-rays have come back negative, uh, so you know he's not going to be put on IR, but is he going to be available to play here? Take it away for us here, Troy. Afternoon action, Steelers, Broncos. Yeah, I'm going to have to spend a little bit more time with this game. I'm going back and forth. I, I just don't understand how Tomlin does it. He just continues to – he just knows how to push the right buttons, get his guys to drink the Kool-Aid. Somehow Justin Fields understands his role as a quarterback. Just don't fuck it up. Only one good option. They have George Pickens, who I think has potential to be a top-10 wide receiver. The offensive line is bad. The skill positions are worse. And defensively, we know what we're going to get out of the Steelers defense. I mean, fantastic at the line of scrimmage. Can they stay healthy? They're getting a little old. Queen in the linebacker group, I think, is huge to help this secondary because he's a great he's great in coverage. When he really he, he definitely relieves some of the pressure that's on the secondary and how bad they were last season. Um, and Bo Nix on the other side of the ball, 
I mean, you look at the stat line, it looks really bad, but that's to be expected. A rookie on the road in Seattle, he dropped back 42 times. And I've seen a lot of scrutiny about this, about him dropping back so many times. And I think it's actually, hey, take it easy. We're talking about a, a rookie quarterback on the road. I think they're trying to figure out what he's going to be, trying to develop him as fast as possible. The best way to do that is to have him drop back. Now, is it ma what matters more, developing a young quarterback or winning week one on the road as a as a dog, as a big dog? Um, you know, I, I watched a little bit of film on this game. I went back and I probably watched two or three series from Bo Nix. I think he had a little bit of composure in the pocket. It kind of reminded me a little bit of C.J. Stroud in Baltimore in week one of last year. I don't want to say that he's the next C.J. Stroud because I was actually really low on Bo Nix. But I think in spite of some of the options at receiver, this offense should look better as the season goes on. Broncos defense, much better than they were in 2023, but they still struggle to stop the run. Uh, but they're dealing with talent everywhere on Seattle, right? On that roster, they're really they're way more concerned with Metcalf, and um, they're tied up with a lot more of the receiving assets that they have. They're not going to have that in this matchup. Uh, so it's this is a really difficult game, in my opinion. There's so many ways you could slice it. I'm going to wait for this market to develop. Obviously, short home dog. Um, has this line been taken towards the under at all? Because – Obviously, yeah. I think about unders. It has from 37 and a half to 36 and a half. The, and you look at the Steelers on the road as favorites over the last two seasons, four games. They were favorites over the last two seasons. Three of them were last year. Uh, they're three and one ATS, three and one straight up, four and oh to the under. And the unders are right up against the total. Like it's there's like no room for error. So uh, I don't know what to do with this game. I really don't. I'm more confused now than I was pre pre flop. You know, simply, I want to back the Steelers, but watching this market sway makes me feel like I'm, you know, you know the the short road favorite walk like just walk into a trap. Um, so I wanted to hear what everybody thought about the Broncos, and it was a. This will be a difficult spot for Fields. And and I still don't fully know what we're getting from this Broncos defense. I thought they looked pretty good against the Seahawks. I mean, what do you think of the Seahawks through the air? I know that Geno Smith is, is not you know an elite quarterback, but they have elite weapons and a real danger at running back. So you have to be wary of you know all fronts and, and Seahawks only threw for 158 yards against the Broncos that maybe maybe we just bet the under even though it's 36 and a half and just move on instead of I, I just the the I, I don't want to get too caught up in what we just saw from the Steelers you know I wasn't on the Falcons I have no futures on the Falcons I have nothing to do with the Falcons so, you know, I, but I wasn't I mean, sharp. I think that looking at these numbers, it's going to be so tight. I think these markets are so efficient, especially in games like this with low totals, a field goal, one possession spread. Um, this is, and at the total at 36 and a half. I mean, it's so sharp. This is the one of the sharpest markets I've ever seen um, in the database, meaning it's going to land right on the total, right on the spread. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. No, I feel that too. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't feel the need to take the the. I would be buying the Steelers high. That's the problem. I can't get past that. This would be a buying the Steelers high spot, and I don't want to ever do that. So I do like the under. I, I think that it's sharp. I think it takes balls to bet an under thirty six and a half. I'm very comfortable doing that. Uh, Dennis says the Steelers scored zero touchdowns. It's not like they're good. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I'm gonna. I think the under is it. I mean, it's one of those very scary unders because that 36 and a half. Uh, Jermaine says going down to 34 and a half. I don't know about that. Uh, I, I mean, that's just so low. Uh, Brady says just give me a pass to score 13 points for the Broncos. I mean, if that's the case, the Steelers should cash. I just now you, we're we're getting towards the two and a half range now. 
I mean, if this goes to two and a half, I don't know how you could have confidence in the Steelers on the road. If this goes to, if this stays at a three and it's a juice three for the Steelers, I think you can have confidence. The two and a half, I think, is telling. After watching these first, the first game for the Steelers, first game for the Broncos, I, I don't know how you would want the Broncos here. The Steelers looked, their defense is healthy. You know, a healthy old defense. We knew they were going to start strong. I, I hate that I wasn't on them last week. I just got, you know, I wasn't against them, but I hate that I wasn't on them. Uh, Brady said, I don't think the Steelers are, are by high. He says, I think the market was wrong on them to begin with. I'm going to move on the under, Troy. I'm going to move on the under as soon as this is over. This show's over. I'm going to move on. Let's roll on.